Shabbat Shalom, Kabo Betham. It's been a few weeks since I did one of these Friday videos, and I thought it was about time that I start them again. Same model, a little communal update, a sweet piece of Torah, I hope it's sweet, and a short meditation for those who want to stay. The quick community update is that this Shabbat marks the first of 16 Shabbatot, during which we have six B'nai Mitzvah and 10 non-B'nai Mitzvah. We mark it that way because after these 16 Shabbatot, there are something like 10 or 12 B'nai Mitzvah in a row. So the clergy of Tomo Betham and the lay leadership have been trying to think about how we program and offer services to you throughout these next four months as the pandemic continues and as we navigate the balance between uh, in-person davening on Zeering Field <clears throat> and Zoom services anchored in the sanctuary and based on what we've learned from the High Holiday Experience. So briefly, I want you to know that while we're still working out the details, something like the following is in the works. For the six Shabbatot that there are B'nai Mitzvah, those services will take place on the field, and that will be the only services on the field. And in the sanctuary, on three of those Shabbatot, there'll be a standard, traditional, rabbi-led Zoom service, also live-streamed. And on three others of those weekends, there will be something creative, maybe an extended Torah study with one of the rabbis, maybe an extended meditation, uh, perhaps a YLE family or child-based service. That's how we're going to divide those six. On the 10 Shabbatot, where there are no B'nai Mitzvah, something like the following division. Don't hold us to this because we're still working it out, but something like this. Three led by the library minion outdoors on Zeering Field. Three led by uh, Temple Beth Am clergy as a Shir Chadash sanctuary style service, but outdoors on Zeering Field. Three offered perhaps as Beitenu services. Uh, akin to what would normally happen at Pilch, and maybe one Hama'alot. And perhaps on some of those 10, when those services are happening on the field, there might be also something alternate happening anchored inside the sanctuary. And there also may be one of those 10 where the traditional um, adult-oriented uh, service is happening earlier in the morning, and there might be a second option perhaps for kids or teens later in the morning or early afternoon. Uh, we're trying to continue to deliver to as many of you as possible, our usual wonderful, robust experience of Shabbat, trying to be creative, uh, inventive, and using and harnessing the technology and the resources of the field as best we can. I look forward to sharing many of those with you. And now, a piece of Torah. The search for truth, it's an elemental urge. Our tradition names truth emet as one of God's core attributes. Perhaps it's even one of God's names, Adonai Eloichem, Emet, Adonai, your God, is truth. The last book written by the late great Rabbi David Hartman was called The God Who Hates Lies, in which he elevates searching for truth as the key religious Jewish urge and obligation. Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel, Judaism's greatest modern prophet, named his magnum opus on Hasidic thought, A Passion for Truth. The title describes the Kutz Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem Mendel of Kutz, as a contrast to the founder of Hasidut, the Baal Shem Tov. Heschel did not think that the Baal Shem Tov was against truth, God forbid, but it wasn't the Baal Shem Tov's focus. The Baal Shem Tov's focus was ecstasy, joy, fervor, which had been lacking in too much of Eastern European Jewry. In Heschel's words, it is comparatively easy to preach joy and fervor, like the Baal Shem Tov. But to demand truth is like shaping marble without tools. And so the Kutzker went looking for a few surging people and called loudly upon their souls to bend their conceit and see the truth beneath the soil. Religion, the Kutzker maintained, was not simply an act of adopting a system of beliefs and certain modes of conduct. Test and trial were needed, and one had to ascertain through introspection whether one's beliefs were genuine or not, and one, whether one acted out truth or lived a life of pretense. Truth is paramount, paramount, he would say, in the religious life. And who would argue against truth? Well, it turns out the Kutzker Rebbe would, and he did, despite his passion for it. He both saw pursuing truth as the highest form of being people, being religious people, and the most certain way to sow discord amongst people and amongst religious people. He comments on a famous midrash on the opening lines of Breshid, our Parsha the Shabbat, 
God says to some of the heavenly hosts, Na'asa'adam, how about we make a human? The celestial spirits argue over the proposal. Chesed, mercy, says, sure, a human is certainly someone who will do gemilut chasadim, acts of loving kindness. The world surely needs that, so let's do it. Emet, truth, says, not so fast. A human will simply overflow with lies. It's not worth the effort. And it will sully this prevarication-less world that you've created, God. Tzedek, justice, says, great idea, for certainly a human will be oset tzedakot, one who executes great justice. But then shalom, peace, says, bad idea. If you create such a being, prepare for constant quarrel and argument and war. No peace. So what does the Holy One do? Casts aside truth, casts truth to the ground, and creates humanity anyway. That's the end of the Midrash. But the Kutzker says, why was it that it was just emet, truth, that is cast aside? Wasn't shalom and peace also against the idea of creating Adam? The Kutzker says something fascinating, especially given his passion for truth. If you cast truth, emet, aside, then there will be peace. What could he possibly mean? He believed that the search for truth is both incredibly noble and also the source of all machloket and disagreement. Everyone is fighting for their own version of truth. But if we shunt our own truth to the side, even a bit, there will be less to argue over. And so shalom, peace, will be mollified and maybe even achieved. Now listen, the Kutzker was rhapsodizing. He was challenging us on a grand concept. He wasn't trying really to convince us to dismiss the notion of truth. This is something John Lennon and Imagine E about this idea. With fewer flags and borders and gods and dogmas to argue over, there might be more peace. We would do well in this era where facts are tragically no longer facts and truthiness has replaced truth. We would do well to operate on both axes simultaneously, to continue to refine ideas and hold them to the highest standard of emet truth, and also to evince the willingness to let our feverish and impassioned and utterly certain holding of the truth go a little bit, at least some time, so that maybe there could be some peace. Shabbat Shalom. If you want to stay for the meditation, please do. If you do not want to stay for the meditation, I love you too, and I wish you a Shabbat Shalom. I ask that you close your eyes. Let a beautiful blanket of serenity come over you, allowing your body to feel a wonderful heaviness as you retreat into yourself and both, as we always do in meditation, expand past yourself. Notice parts of your body that are awake and need to be given over to slumber. Perhaps your mind can will those tingling limbs to just quiet down. And notice the part of your body that is to asleep and can be awakened with your concentration and your intention. And so listen to the sound of my voice pushing all those signs, sounds to the edge of your consciousness, to the periphery. And as you get into a deep breathing mode where you're breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth, with the out breath being a little bit longer than the in breath, which is a show of generosity to the entire world. You're giving more than you are taking. Let the word truth or emet, if the Hebrew works better for you, appear in your mind now. A 
banner, the slogan. An image of the word and all of its associations in front of you, like a carrot to chase, to achieve, a worthy, noble, beautiful image. Have all of the beauty of Emet be in the center of your mind. The ways in which honesty and holding people accountable for accuracy, holding yourself accountable, really drive society and relationship and religious life. Notice in the center of that image your own distaste for lying. Others lying for sure, and even your own when it happens, how it makes you feel. Truth as a blazing light in the center of your center. And on its edges of this circular blazing light of truth, like the penumbra emanating from the sun, noticed where truth has dark side, where it gets you and society into trouble, where we are blinded by our own certainty or supposed certainty to others' needs and hearts and beauties and faiths. This is the sun, S-U-N, of truth. An extraordinary, needed, brilliant, pulsing center, giving light to all of reality. Big firestorms on its edges that can burn and blind and obscure rather than Meditate on this truth, this emet. Watch it in your mind's eye. Let it penetrate your consciousness. Intentionally complicate your relationship to it. Ready, you can open your eyes. And I say to you, I miss you, and I love you, and Shabbat Shalom.